Folks, Skip here from Woodworking UK. Um, thought I'd do a bit of an unboxing and review video of this Titan track saw or plunge saw, as it's sometimes called. It says plunge saw on the box, but uh, you know what it is. Uh, basically, circular saw, for those of you that don't know, that fits into a track. So you can clamp your track to your board, your workpiece. Uh, the saw clamps into it, so you can't move. Off you go and rip your board down. Or whatever it is you're working on. Uh, now I don't normally work with sheet goods, hardly at all. And if I do, it's only little bits. So I normally use my table saw. But I've got an order uh, coming up that's going to need, you know, quite quite a lot of work cutting cutting sheets of uh, plywood. Now I normally get uh, my wood yard, my supplier that I go to, will rip them down for you. But if you need lots and lots of little cuts, you, you can't stand there all day. You know, they'll do a couple of cuts of board for you, but that's about it. So, I've got myself one of these. Uh, it's about the cheapest sort of entry level one you can get. But um, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube comparing them to others and they're, they're pretty reasonable for the money. So, I thought I'd go for this. There was one at, uh, I think it was Rutland's for 60 quid, but it was a lot smaller machine. Um, and it would have done this order that I've got. It would have done me because I made a really cutty 18 mil or 12 mil uh, exterior ply but I thought for the extra 40 quid for this one because this this one comes in at um, 100 quid I think it's 99 pound so 100 quid um, the, the extra 40 quid th this is a bit more future proof I thought for the sake of uh, that bit extra so it'll you know it'll come in more handy in the future as opposed to just buying it for this one order so in the box here we've got instruction book that appears to be an extraction adapter, the saw. Uh, spare brushes. And uh, the track. Now I think there's two sections of track in here, if I remember right. Two 700 mil rails, so you've got 1.4 meters. Which, obviously, if you uh, if you're ripping uh, 2.4 meter boards, ain't long enough. But I'm not the 2.4. I can get that ripped at, at the wood yard. But you can buy extra rails. I'm not sure if you can buy the Titan branded ones extra. I'll, I haven't looked to be honest because I didn't need any. But um, there's my knife. But uh, I've seen quite a few people say that the the Makita rails, um, I think the Festool rails, not that you're going to go and buy a Titan plunge saw and then go and shell out for Festool rails, but you know there are other rails that, that you can you can use alongside these supplied ones. Just turn that down there. Okay, so two rails. Now, if you're watching this and you've never used a plunge saw before, we're in the same boat because neither have I. So, I'm kind of winging it as I'm going along. So, we've got, I spotted an Allen key there, I'm assuming that's, oh no, that's not for that. Ah, there it is. There's a little Allen key. And there's a, uh, loosen these bolts. Can you see that? Let's see, look, there's like a, uh, that's a joining strip. Put you back down over there. There's a joining strip there. You loosen that off. Loosen the grub screws off. Famous last words. Okay. Loosen the grub screws off. And that slides across into your next section of track. So it's halfway between both sections. Just nip it up, and that's your joining strip. There's another joining strip there. That must be, obviously, if you buy extra sections of track, so that you can um, join another one on that other end there. So, the track, 
I'm willing to stick my neck out and say there's not going to be a lot in between this track, you know, than the Makita track. If they're interchangeable and you can use them both, then I'm going to say the same. I've not seen them, but it's basically a aluminium. Is it aluminium? It's definitely an alloy. It looks like aluminium. Profile track. All seems solid enough. Nothing really to. It's got. Uh, you've got your rubber strip on the end. That's your first cut. Takes the edge of that off, and then that's that's what lines up. You cut every time. You've got some sort of rubbery foam backing strips on the back there to help it, you know, stop it sliding around on your on your board. But you you would clamp it anyway at either end. So uh, the saw. Just have plenty of cable on it. If I can get in it. What we've got there, there must be six. I'm six foot. It's got to be another four foot. You've got to be ten foot of cable on there. So you've got a good length of cable to work at. No worse than plugging your tool in and it don't reach. You have to go and uh, start faffing about with extensions. Plenty of cable. Everything feels feels pretty solid. As you'd expect. The plastic knobs that lock off the, you know, your depth stop, your your angle tilt, um, your your locking. These are like a locking cam, I believe that one is. That locks it into your track. They're all a little bit. You can just tell they're that sort of plastic that's cheaper, but it's a cheap saw. You don't really get. You know, you, you don't really get forty quid's worth of plastic knobs. On a hundred quid saw, but all in all, it feels solid. It's not that heavy. It's certainly lighter than my old circular saw. Let's plug her in, and kick her up. Let's see what sort of. We've got a, there's a safety. Uh, uh, what do you call them? Safety button before you pull the trigger. That noisy. It's quieter than my table saw. I've got the dual, the uh, DW745 table saw. It's quieter than that. It's quieter than my old, uh, my old um, circular saw, my hand old circular saw, which is really, really old, cheap rubbish one because I don't use it. One of these B and Q Power Pro or whatever it used to be called, Performance Power Pro. No, the old, it's like what um, came before McAllister. I've had that years and years, but I hardly use it. Literally get it out just for breaking big boards down, but it makes a right messy cut because the blade's knackered and that. But I break boards down, then I tidy them up after on my table saw. So, I'll just have a minute to set it up, see if I can get my extraction up to And I'll come back to you and we'll do a cut. Right then. So, I broke all rules and had to have a quick flick through the instruction book. That's that done with. Just to make sure I weren't doing anything uh, I shouldn't be. The dust extraction weren't exactly the same size for my uh, vac. So what I've done, that little the adapter should plug in there and then your vac in there. But it doesn't fit. So, as with most of my things, I've, I've lodged a little bit of pipe that I've got around there. And put it the other way around, that pipe joins into it pretty snugly, and then my vac fits in there a treat. So, most dust extraction, to be honest, unless you've got like you know all the set all Makita tools or all Dewalt tools and they've got the same size uh, adapter, most most of my tools have got you know, there's a sander, you just have to bodge something on the end just so that everything's got the right size for your vac. So that done, um, you've got the lock button that stops you from pulling the uh, the, the trigger to, to power the saw up is also a plunge lock. Well, you can't plunge that. So once you press that and put the power on, then it unlocks the plunge, so you can plunge it down. I've set my plunge depth to 20mm, so this is 18mm ply. Uh, so it just goes a couple of mil through it. 
I've got some uh, buttons underneath. So it's a 2x2 that I've got lying around underneath my board so I don't get through my bench. One little feature, if I can just show you. Can you see this little switch here? The top one is for changing the blade. I'm not entirely sure what it does, but you need in that mode for changing the blade. I'm guessing there's a there'll be a pin or something inside here that, that locks somewhere. That one's for changing the blade. The middle one is for free cutting. That's where you want it on for general use. The bottom one, that one. Can you see that? That's for a scribe cut. That's where it'll it'll just let you cut uh, a couple of mil, which is handy for marking out on laminates and like this plywood. Um, it can help give you a cleaner cut, so so you don't uh, just go for it. You, you can smash obviously your top layer of ply off. So that's what that's for. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with full cut because this. I'm just breaking this down. I'm gonna cut shapes out of it. So this isn't the final cut. So it don't really matter if I, you know, get a bit of tear out. I've put a little clamp on the end here. I've only clamped it. Oh, this little F clamp. I've only clamped it very lightly because I don't want to disfigure this track. Now uh, in the book, uh, you can get some proper clamps uh, that fit in the T track. But I'll have a look at them later. I'm guessing. Only guessing, but they're going to be a few quid, whereas these are cheap as chips. So, I reckon I'll probably get a couple of these. These are just a little, what are they, 200 mil? Yeah, 200 mil F clamps, the forged steel ones from Screwfix. I'm willing to bet I'll be able to modify the end of one of them so it fits in that, in the end of that track. That's what the, uh, the ones in the instruction manual do, they fit in that little track. <coughs> so, here goes. Sorry about the noise because I'm going to have to fire me back up. I'm going to go for a full cut. Okay, so that's cut through. Um, what I did do wrong there, actually, I only use one section of track because this this board is only 700 mil. But it meant that when I plunged the saw, it was a couple of inches across already into the board. So what you would need to do is actually use both sections of track and have them overhanging. So you're starting, you're kind of starting your cut here, as opposed to here. Because when you've plunged, I've missed the first couple of inches. So I had to go back and just trim that. As I say, if it if that were a um, you know a cut that mattered, I, I wouldn't have done that. I'd have, I'd have probably done it off camera to be fair. But uh, as I say, that I'm just breaking this down. That's going to have a shape cut out of it, so it doesn't matter what the cut's like. But to be fair, it's not a bad cut. The first off, the second off has has got a little bit of tear out there. Maybe I was. Rushing it a bit. Let's let's have another go. I've got enough of this ply to uh, have another go. I'm going to try a scribe cut. Just bear with me. Right, so I've joined the other section of track on, so I've got the overhang, so I don't make the same mistake again. And uh, what I'm going to do is just try the I'm going to put that selector switch I showed you before onto scribe cut. I'm assuming that's just like a, a predetermined depth stop that stops at a couple of mil. So I'm going to put me uh, put me vac on and then uh, have another cut. Now, if you want to pull this back across the track, you can't because it's got an anti kickback device on it. But all you have to do is, is unlock this little that little yellow knob there, you just twist that, that's the anti-kickback. 
and you can slide it back. Quite a good little function there, stops it from kicking back. And we've got, yeah, you see, that's a lot cleaner cut, much, much cleaner. Lift that out of the way. I'll try and show you that cut. Take that up, steaming up. Can you? Oh, I don't know. We're making people feel sick here. That's using the front camera. You see? See, that's a scribe cut. That's only a two mil deep, and that's lovely and clean. That's a really nice clean cut. That is. Can't see any tear out whatsoever on that. And I, I weren't that careful, I, I, you know, I just shoved it through. Spot on, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that. So now you could go do a full depth cut through that and you, you've saved your, your laminate or your, uh, in this case, your top layer of your ply getting smashed and getting all tear out across it. So, 100 quid. Got to be worth 100 quid. Will it be the best one out there? Probably not. So I've not used... Um, any of the others some of the popular ones I've seen that people use to be fair I've only really seen people use the Makita or the, the Festool now I know most people ain't got Festool money I know if you're using these all day every day at work you're a tradesman uh, you know it's money well spent but that is easily in my opinion easily 100 quid's worth so I mean you've got what is it two two years is it, is it a two year or three year guarantee with screw fix so you, you've got two years at least of relatively hassle free use out of that because if it does does pack up you can take it back but I've got no reason to believe it will I've got a few tighten bits in my shop Things I use and they get a hard life, I tend to buy like me, my drill driver, it's a Bosch Pro. Stuff like this that just gets used occasionally. I mean, I do this all the time, you know, it's, I, I'm not a pro joiner, as most of you know, but I do uh, do it for a living, amongst other things. But um, I reckon that'll serve me well. I've got the few other bits I've got that are tight and have served me well. I've got Plane of thickness are over here, and this is quite hard work trying to film on the front camera. I can't see what I'm doing if I don't. The Titan Vac they're uh, connected up to me, uh, my Cyclone, and they've been brilliant to be honest for the money. So, yeah, if you're in the market for a track saw, you've got 100 quid to spend, I'd recommend it. All right, so if you've not already uh, seen the, the Facebook group. Uh, get yourself onto Facebook and the group is Woodworking UK. If you're interested in woodworking at all and you live in the UK, UK and Ireland, um, we will approve your membership. And there's loads of stuff on there from general chat, projects, tips, help, no matter what level you are, whether you're a pro cabinet maker or you're just a weekend wood bodger that likes doing obby stuff in your shed. 